Hi guys, today we will show you how to make cold with magnets. This sounds quite weird, but let me explain it to you. This uses a phenomenon called magnetocalorific refrigeration. When you take a magnetocaloric material and when you place it into a magnetic field, it heats up. And when you take it out of the field, it cools down, which leads to massive drop of temperatures, as you can see. And so scientists use that phenomenon to cool things very properly in labs. As you understood, the key element of this phenomenon is the magnetic field, but it's not a magnetic field as we know. For a classical magnet, there is the same magnetic field on both sides of the magnet, the north and south poles. But in this system, we need a quite strong magnetic field, and this strong field only on one side. Sounds impossible? not for physics. It's possible to generate this type of field thanks to a particular assemblage, the albacore. But let's find out how to actually make this albacore. Here are the different steps to stick the magnets together. First, put the magnets on a steel plate, then apply generously or special glue on the magnets. Thirdly, add them on the hot source. Note that they can turn around Push them with a stick and wait. Our special glue is very strong and it needs time to set. Finally, remove the steel plate and enjoy your whole back array. Um, now that the magnets are in place, let's deal with the moving parts of the system. The only issue you have when you try to move the plate is that there are magnets on the lower part of the system and those magnets induce a magnetic strain that we would like to cancel out. We could use a spraying but this would be only a partial solution. So the idea is to use two springs with different length so not both springs would be pushing at the same time. At some point both springs would be pushing but at some other point only one spring would be pushing. So it would create the strain that you see here that would make us very happy. When uh, the plate is close to the magnet, both springs would be pushing, whereas only one would be pulling when it's far. Thanks to Alexander's system, you're welcome, bro. Strains are partially reduced, but they remain high between the plates and the magnet. So, a strong linear actuator is needed, Jack. For this job, Jack has two problems to overcome. First, he has to remove the gadolinium from the old back array. Then, he has to keep the gadolinium on the surface of the cold reservoir. So, Jack has to be strong, and of course, he can't be too slow. Um, great, so we now have the movement of the gadolinium plates and the magnetic fields, but how about the hot and cold reservoir? Let's see how the actuator, the magnetic fields and the reservoirs, well, let's see how all the elements are linked together. To guide the plate from the hot to the cold reservoir, it's necessary to connect the two reservoirs. The question now is, how can we make this connection the strongest possible? This link will be composed of four pillars which support the cold reservoir and guide the plate in transmission. Pillars will have to, will have to face two problems. First, they have to support stresses because of the contact between the core reservoir and the platform, which could induce strains inside them. Also, manufacturing defects could induce the strains inside the pillars during the assemblage. The second major problem is thermal properties. Pillars will be thermal bridges between the cold and the hot reservoirs. In other words, a lot of heat might be transferred through them and it could nullify the cooling effect. So how can we deal with this? The solution is to find a compromise between mechanical strength and thermal properties in order to find a diameter which could optimize the two properties. So the, the method is first to find criteria, then analyzing compartment behaviors of pillars and then validating. Now we are able to generate our magnetic field, create the cooling cycle, and we know how to put the different parts of our system together. The only missing thing now is how can we measure the cooling effect.
Oh, okay guys, let's talk about the final step, the temperature measurement. But do not worry, it's much simpler than you might think. It's only a chain composed of elemental things put together. First of all, we'll use a thermocouple composed of two strings made from different collectors. If the temperature difference is applied between the two strings, it will produce an electric voltage. To bypass this, we'll use a cold junction compensator which will free us from knowing the temperature of one string. After that, we use voltage amplifiers to clearly see the small electrical voltage generated and it's all good. With electronic editing and all the steps previously shown, you will be able to detect the change of temperature due to the magnetocaloric effect and enjoy this incredible physical phenomenon. But to prove that the system works, let us show you our system and the change of temperature induced. And don't be suspicious, it's not magic, just science. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed our video don't forget to subscribe